Beauty is on the eyes of the beholder, and these beholders for all generations have a different standards. In this man's time, beauty is measured by the standards of the gods and goddesses who are adored by his fellow citizens. But the man was almost the opposite of the proportional sculptures of the gods. He was labeled as the most unattractive person in the city. He had a long beard on his small face, with large and big bold head, and also, he was short in stature. This man was born into a respectable in descent family, his father Sophroniscus was a sculptor and stonemason, and his mother Phenaridi was a traditional midwife. He appeared to have had no more than an ordinary Greek education, reading, writing, gymnastics and music, and, later, geometry and astronomy. According to some writers, he worked until he acquired the wealth that he thought would be enough to support his wife and three children. After that, his main task in life was conversing with a variety of different people in his city, young and old, male and female, slave and free, rich and poor, citizen and visitor, that is, with virtually anyone he could persuade to join with him in his question and answer mode of probing serious matters. One day, the resident of that city heard a shocking news that says the mayor of the city granted the man the highest honor, a title before his name read as the wisest man in the city in contrary of what the people knew about him. They rush towards his favorite place in the city, where he talks and debates all day, and asked him how he landed this title. He calmly replied, I am titled as the wisest man in the city, not because I am wise, but I am aware of the mayor's ignorance. Starting from that moment, the man is not only the wisest man of the city, but also in the world, his name is the wisest man in the city of Athena, Socrates. Pre-Socratic philosophy were much more interested in establishing how the world works. In ancient Greece, Maltese city, under Thales leadership, philosophy started to blossom by thinking. The truth of everything is water. The student of Thales, Anaximander, thought the truth of everything is a pyron. And he was asked, what is a pyron? His answer was simple, I don't know. And once more, philosophy fall in the hand of Anaximenes, student of Anaximander. He thought the truth of everything is air, because of it, we could see the trees, the hills, the mountains, nature, everything. But Socrates' philosophy was concerned with how people think and behave. For him, philosophy has to deal with the human mind, not air, water, etc. He is credited as one of the founders of Western philosophy. His views were vital in the development of major philosophical movements and schools which came after him, including Platonism, Cynicism, Stoicism, and Hedonism. Until now, any philosophical texts written by him weren't discovered, but his teachings were obtained from his students and contemporaries, particularly Plato's dialogues, Aristotle, Xenophon, and Aristophanes, most of them, in dialogue form. Socrates believed all the good things are grown from wisdom, bad things from ignorance, and the greater wisdom is to know one's ignorance, and knowing comes from thinking. This was his way how he tested and failed all the respected Greek philosophers who he crossed paths with. A teacher went to Socrates to know him when Socrates noticed he was a teacher, he asked, Before you share your knowledge to your students, are you aware of your own ignorance? The teacher who praised Socrates so much replied, I am aware of that. Socrates, then go and tell this to your students. Teacher, but what if they leave me? 
Socrates replied, then you will be free and learn here with me. And on another day, a very feared and respected government official stopped Socrates on one of Athena's streets and asked, I have served my country and people in the office for a while now. But I still don't understand how to behave like a government official. Socrates smiled and replied, an official is a one that can't control his desire, but want to control his people's desire. Without looking back, he continued his journey. For Socrates, the problems we encounter are caused by ignorance, and the only solution is wisdom. But he also questions, how do we acquire wisdom? How do we check whether the wisdom is right or wrong? Who is the one capable of giving wisdom? Early in the morning, Socrates went to his favorite spot, and as always the people of Athena gathered around him to learn. But he stood still there staring at one specific part of the ground without saying a word. An hour went by before they knew it was lunchtime, some of the foxes went to grab something. To make the long story short, without moving a single muscle, it is midnight already, some went to their houses tired, but some were eager to see how this will turn out. The next morning, Socrates shook his head like he suddenly understood something and smiled, then started to walk away from them. From the crowd, one young man asked, We were waiting for you all day and night, what were you doing? His answer was simple, thinking. That is why Abraham Kaplan in his book, The New World of Philosophy, described him, Philosophy was living in the clouds, but Socrates grabbed and placed it on marketplace, but the people on the marketplace are still searching philosophy in the clouds. The saying, thinking made humans superior to animals has no place for him, he believed, thinking made the difference among humans, not between animals and humans. One day, Socrates was walking around the city and noticed a large crowd attending a lecture and slowly joined them. The lecture was about courage, Socrates spoke, I am sorry I interrupted you, what do you mean by saying, courage? The teacher replied, courage means even if the enemy is getting closer to you, it is the ability to stand still no matter what. He nodded and said, what if all your plans went out of the window and you should start to run away to save your life? The teacher answered, well, in this case, courage transforms into the ability to run. Socrates, how could courage have the two only options a man has on a battlefield? The teacher started to shake in front of the crowd and said, Oh, Socrates, you tested me. Now thinking about it, I don't think I know much about courage. I don't know neither, said Socrates. I think courage isn't different from using your mind. I will be surprised if it has another definition. My brother, at any dangerous circumstances, choosing the right actions is courage for me. A voice from the crowd yelled, that is the right definition. Socrates walked towards the man and said, so let's agree courage means thinking using your mind and its opposite, being reactive. The crowd agreed, Socrates turned to see if the teacher agreed with this idea. But the teacher wasn't there. Socrates always tried to prove the ignorance of teachers he encountered. This action made him rich in friends and also made powerful enemies especially from the sophists. He was accused of disrespecting the gods and goddesses and leading the youths in the wrong way by the sophists. He is considered as the very antithesis of the sophists of his day, who claimed to have knowledge which they could transmit to others, often for payment, arguing instead that knowledge should be pursued for its own sake, even if one could never fully possess it. 
On the next day, Socrates was on trial in front of 500 judges. And he was given the chance to speak, and he spoke, I didn't infect the hearts of the youths, my job is always focused on finding the truth, I only taught them to assist me on my journey to find the truth. I displayed your ignorance to the people not because I hate you, but to elevate you to the position where you should be. But there is one truth, unexamined life isn't worth living. I didn't commit any crime, but if you sentence me to die, you will be the criminals. The majority of them voted guilty of his charges and sentenced him death by poison. Hearing this, Socrates said, for me, death means two things, one, I may enter into eternal silence, or I may transit to another world, both options excite me. Because, if I enter to eternal silence, there will not be voices like you, to disrupt my peace, and if I transit to another world, I am sure there will not be hate, jealousy, insult, and also death sentences, like what you are doing now. One day prior to the execution day, his student tried to free him by bribing the guards. But Socrates didn't like it and said to him, You know I lived my whole life respecting the law. I would rather die by the law than to be free by killing the law. That is why the followers and admirers of Socrates even in modern times say, It is always better to be thrown in jail for wisdom than to sit on Caliban chair with ignorance.